today I'm speaking about Isaiah chapter 14, verse 11, which says, and this is speaking about the, the king of Babylon. Uh, it's this evil uh, principality. It, it, Lucifer is also uh, a name here that we're talking about hell. And it says your pomp, your pride, your strutting pomp is brought down to Sheol and the sound of your stringed instruments. The maggot is spread under you. And worms, this word uh, for worms is also found in the last verse. Their worm never dies. Uh, the worms cover you. Uh, everyone should go to embalming school and they should find out what rigor mortis means. They should see pictures of corpses. They should try to understand what is involved in the decay of the body. They should follow a grave digger around. They should see bodies exhumed. They should see what a body looks like after the uh, vault has been opened and the uh, putrefaction is, is examined. They need to smell rot, the, the rotting stench. I, 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 I have a few teenagers here that are getting ready to pass out. You know, it's not funny, friend, because we're talking about you. We're talking about your body where your soul resides. And basically, the scriptures give you an ultimatum. It's either martyrdom or maggots. Take your choice. Because if you go to the mikvah and you go under the mikvah, you are a martyr who is basically saying, I've given up my life. I'm giving it to the Lord. I'm getting out of the driver's seat. This, this life that I have, this body, this, this dying body is now the property of Yeshua. And I will live in the body in a way that will please the Lord. And, and as far as my own life is concerned, as far as my life is concerned, it is finished. It is the, my body now belongs to the Lord. He's the Lord of the body. The Mashiach has me and I give myself to him. The body is not for fornication. The body is, is not for uh, idolatry. The body is not for uh, gluttony. Or, uh, or the miser's uh, uh, love of money. The, the body is for the Lord. And when you give your body to the Lord, it's the same as martyrdom. And, and actually the mikvah, the mikvah maim, is a martyr's uh, uh, ordeal. Uh, when, when you go under the water, you're saying, my, my body is now buried with him and risen with him. Now, if you don't want to go that route, if you want to try to hang on to your body, and your life, if you want to be like a famous singer who said, I don't need him, I've got my own life, and I've got my drugs, and I've got my enablers for my drug habit, and I'm going to just let my body be the repository of my quaaludes and all my prescription drugs and my alcohol, and, and I'm going to uh, 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 have my career and my body. Well, let me tell you about your body. I want to go into the body. I want you to know what rigor mortis is. Within three hours of your death, there will be a stiffening. And if you die in a strange position, you will stiffen like a statue, like, an, like a grotesque statue in that position. If the, mort if the mortician doesn't do, do some things right away, you're, you're going to, you're, you're, the color, the blood coming to, uh, up from the skin is going to discolor your face. And, uh, you know, when Patton was in his Jeep going through Nazi Germany, he saw all, all these frozen soldiers, and they, their faces were blue with the, the blood. Uh, the mortician will try to drain that out. But let me tell you something. Even the embalming fluid will not stop the putrefaction. The maggots will come, friend. Yes, they will come, and they will eat your flesh. And, and here, what does it say in chapter 14, verse 11? It says, Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy stringed instruments. The worm is spread under thee. It's talking about the maggots. In a house flies different cycles. One cycle is the maggot. Those little worms that just eat everything. Yes, they feed on the flesh, and they will feed on you. You say, oh, I don't want that to happen to my body. I, I hope to have an airtight uh, casket. I hope I have a concrete vault. 
I hope that somehow that is avoided. Well, sort of, sort of uh, cremation. I don't know how you could avoid that, because those maggots are coming for you, and, and you're 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 only a very uh, you're in this body. You're you're like someone jumping on a subway. You're just a, a very transient rider. You're here today and gone tomorrow. You have to make, you have to get right with God. You have to ask the Lord to to take your who he says who will deliver me from this body of death. That's one of the verses right there in Romans. Who will deliver me? Look, this, this, this evil Lucifer, it says, the worm is spread under thee. In other words, you're laying on a blanket of worms, and the worms cover thee. Uh, it's talking about the, the maggots that you're lying on and, and, the, and the worms that is your, 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 your blanket. This man who had known only luxury, only expensive uh, couches and, and carpets. This is, this is the way his, his life will end. And, and you've got to make a decision today. Is it going to be mar uh, uh, the martyr's mikvah or the, or, or the grave's maggots? You've got to ask the Lord. Uh, are you ready to give up, to let go and let God? Are you ready to give your life to the Lord? Listen, one of the things I had to do before I gave my life to the Lord, because believe me, man, I was holding on to my life till the till a bitter end. I had a friend who had been in my high school, and he was a mortician. And I, I wrote him a letter, and I said, would you let me borrow your mortician's manual, one of the, one of the uh, uh, books that you had to study to get your mortician's license? He said, sure, you can have it for a couple of weeks, but you got to send it back to me. I said, no problem. I will definitely do that. And... So he mailed it to me, and I began to look at it. I had a Bible over here, but I had a mortician's manual here. And I started looking at all of these grotesque bodies, bodies being embalmed, bodies that had had, uh, had terrible uh, disfigurement from the automobile accidents, bodies in rigor mortis, bodies in the casket, bodies uh, uh, laying on the slab of the... Uh, embalming room in the uh, where, where the uh, mortician does his work. Uh, uh, young girls, old women, young boys, old men, mi middle-aged people, uh, people that didn't look very well educated and people that looked very, very dignified. They were all uh, uh, in the, in the uh, embalmer's uh, room on his embalming slab. Fred, this is reality. Do you understand? I'm talking about reality. I'm preaching Isaiah chapter 14, verse 11. I'm talking about your rotting life, your rotting corpus, your, your rotting uh, corpse, your, your, your rotting uh, carcass. I'm, I'm talking about you. This is you we're talking about. And, and it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, whether you're young or old, this could come at any time. You're only one heartbeat away from the horror that I'm talking about. I wish that you could follow a, a, uh, a grave digger around and, and let him go into an old cemetery where they really didn't even have good caskets and dig until you hit something hard. Then you see something down uh, uh, maybe uh, six feet under and it's just a plastic bag and you open it up and the horrendous odor comes up and assaults you and you immediately have a gagging reaction and you want to throw up and maybe you do throw up. Because this is, this is where you're going without Yeshua HaMashiach. Listen, friend, it says in Psalm 16, he did not see Shachat. Everything I've described, he did not see. His body did not rot. Your body will rot. His body did not rot. And those of you who are in Jews for Judaism, who are spending all of your time trying to talk people out of eternal life, and out of the resurrection body that the Mashiach modeled for you, you people are fools. You are the worst kind of fool. Like vultures who prey on simpletons and are not happy until you've drugged somebody off into hell. Look, if you don't want to go to heaven, if you want to go to hell, if you want to rot in hell, if you want to rot where it says their worm does not, their worm does not die. The last verse of Isaiah, their worm does not die. If you want to be where maggots never die, 
Well, then you can go there, but why would you try to talk other people into doing that? The resurrection of the Mashiach is one of the best attested things of antiquity. We don't have that many witnesses that wrote down about what Julius Caesar did when he crossed this river or that river. He may have done it. We believe he did do it. There were people who saw him do it. But as far as the witnesses that actually wrote it down, and as far as having that material in our hands, we don't have it. Not like this, over 500 people at one time. All these martyrs that wrote their testimony in blood. The New Testament is written by martyrs' blood, friend. The ink dipped in martyrs' blood. And you have a choice today. You can either dip in the mikvah of the martyr and give your life to the Lord and give him this, this, this hulking flesh that you have. Give it to him. Or you can hang on to it. Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you try to keep your life, you will lose it. You will lose it to the maggots. You will lose it to the grave worm. You, you will lose it to Gehinom. You will lose it to the eternal fire. Eternal fire. And this passage I'm reading to you is in Isaiah chapter 14. And he knew very much about David. And, and when Nathan confronted David and said, well, wasn't it enough that I took you from, from tending to the flocks and running after the sheep and I gave you a palace and I made you a king and I gave you uh, uh, all these uh, wonderful things? Is it, if it had not been enough, I would have given you even more. But you so despised my word, you so despised my word that you took another man's wife and then you murdered him and committed adultery. And then you tried to, to uh, uh, you know, put it under the rug and, and you thought you could get away with it. But Nathan is here with the word of God telling you that God was watching all the time. God is watching you, friend. He's looking at you right now. He's looking at your heart. And he, he's looking into the future. He's seeing the maggots eating your flesh. He's seeing your soul in torment and hell. And he wants you to turn to him. He's not willing that any should perish. But he wants everyone to come to salvation. He, 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 want, he would rather you be a martyr and be in heaven. Or even take a martyr's right and go under the mikvah and join him than to spend eternity where you're going. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. David didn't know who he was dealing with when he sent his servants to get that woman and bring her to him, and she came to him. Oh, yes, she came to him. She wasn't just uh, procured. She willingly came, and she willingly committed adultery, and they were two willing culprits, and God saw it, and he sees your heart today, and he sees the wickedness of your heart. And he's not willing that you should perish. He wants to save you from the maggots, from the fire, from eternal perdition, from the torment, from the worm that does not die and the fire that can't be quenched. And I want you to pray this with me right now. And get serious with God. Get serious with God. I don't have that in Bomber's manual anymore. I can't show you all those pictures of your future. All I can do is plead with you to pray with me. Would you ask the Lord to come into your heart right now and forgive your sins? Just say this with me. Everyone praying together. Dear God, Dear God. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I, know I know there's a worm. I know there's maggots. I know there's perdition and hell. Save me, Lord. I give my life to you. I turn away from everything that holds me to this world. And I give my body to you, Lord. I give my mind to you. I give my soul to you for you to take it. And, oh, God, save it and preserve it for heaven. That's why you died. That's why you rose from the dead. Thank you, Yeshua HaMashiach, Ben Dovid, and everybody said amen. amen.